babies, but you also want a man. I hear you, I understand, and we don't just want men, we need men. Because men offer structure, they offer protection, they offer provision, they offer a sense of safety. They are, they're just overall great. Listen, I understand that sometimes we have bad experiences, but I need us to remember that one man does not reflect for all men. So keep your options open, keep your hope alive. Keep your hope alive. Now, we are talking about dating as a single mom, and I understand the challenges firsthand of dating while you have kiddos at home. Now, my children are 17 and seven, so I'm going to not only speak from the position of a parent that has older children, because it does get a little easier when they're older, but I also am gonna share some tips for dating when you have younger children because there is a 10 year age gap between my kids, clearly. So there was a time when I was dating with only one and they were younger, okay? So my first tip is you need to organize your time. Now the reality is we all need structure as schedule and we all need to have our time allotted and organized just for life to run more smoothly, right? Now the reality is typically we have school and we have work on a normal day. But I am wondering, are you giving yourself time in the morning? Do you give yourself some quiet time in the morning to be able to pour into yourself? Do your daily affirmations. We talk about it in my book, How to Flirt, which if you are dating, you definitely need that book, okay? In my book, I talk about getting up every morning and loving on yourself and pouring into yourself. So for me, I like to get up every morning at 5 a.m. I know that sounds early, but I give myself an hour. From 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. is an untouchable time for me. I shower, I do my hair, makeup if I want, pick out cute clothes, do my daily affirmations, I meditate, I work out, I pray. Whatever it is I feel I need that morning, that's what I do. And my kids understand from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., don't talk to me. Matter of fact, I picked that time because they're not even up yet, right? Now, at 6 a.m., we typically get our kids up. By 7 a.m., everybody is dressed, fed, lunch is packed, whatever, you're out the door. Let's say you have to be at work at eight o'clock. You have to drop those kids off by seven. You have to leave the house by seven, excuse me. Typically, everybody's out of that car by 7.30. Let's use that as the scenario, because that's my real life. If you are trying to date, you have to let the people that are showing interest in you know that I am so excited when I see your good morning beautiful text, and I never ignore it. However, I just want you to know that the morning times are crazy in my house because I like to get everybody up and going and out the door. So I may not be able to respond to you until 7.30 in the morning once I get everybody out for school. Matter of fact, if you're free, I would love to hear your voice first thing in the morning. That'll really get my day going well. Listen, if you use verbiage like that, that man is going to feel like I need to do whatever I need to get myself free to talk to her at 7.30. He is going to respect the fact that you are putting your kids first and you are prioritizing your responsibilities. And you have also made space and time for him to be able to be important to you too. So be okay with organizing your time so that you can carve out time for your intended, your romantic interests, right? Now, let's say you talk to him in the morning on the way to work, then you may be able to talk to him at lunch. Also, to me, that's a great date time. If you can do an hour lunch, if you got one of those type of jobs and you take lunch every day at 12.30, ask him if he'd be willing to coordinate his lunch time with your lunch time, if it's possible. And it doesn't have to be all the time, but by organizing your time and being uh, open and honest with what you need with your intended, he may be able to make some accommodations. And if that man is really interested in you, he's gonna make himself available, trust me. But how that benefits you as well is, your kids are at school. So you're able to date without having to find a babysitter, without having to inconvenience anyone or feel guilty leaving your kids at home. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Having those lunchtime dates, or if you can do a morning time date because you don't go in till 10, 
that's perfect because you know your kids are taken care of. And as a single mom, we often struggle with the mom guilt. I don't have time to date because I got kids. Well, guess what? You really don't have time not to date because your kids deserve to see you being loved and treated well. How do our children grow up to know what love is supposed to look like if we keep ourselves single, right? That doesn't really make sense. We are the examples that our children are following. So unfortunately, if it doesn't work with their dad, that doesn't mean you give up. That doesn't mean you turn into a hermit crab and go back in your cave and never talk to anybody till your youngest is 18. No, that just means you have to be very strategic with how you date. And the first step is making sure that you organize your time and you carve out time that is untouchable. So when I was dating, here is what I would do. I would let my intended know that my babies are out of my car by 7.30 and I'm gonna call you every morning on my way to work so we can talk. Cause that is like one of the highlights of my day. That's one. I always offer to meet for lunch if it works. Not every day, once a week, maybe twice a week if y'all have time. And understand, ladies, hear me out. Hold on, don't fight me in the comments. If you are being fiscally responsible and you pack your lunch every day and he packs his lunch every day, what's wrong with y'all meeting at a park and eating lunch together? It's about creating the connection. It's not always about spending money. And also, I want you to think about this. It is not that you are cheapening your dating experience by meeting him at a park, bringing your lunch and eating your lunch together or stopping and getting lunch and just doing something quick. It's also about making it convenient for you because remember, it is easier for you to meet him in the middle of the day while the kids are at school or at camp or wherever, but it is very hard to find a babysitter in the evening and make sure that everybody is good before you go back out. Make it easy on yourself and letting your intended know, I know it's not convenient, but I would be so grateful if you would help me make this as easy as possible for us. If we could meet for lunch on Wednesdays, I can guarantee you that that time would be untouchable for you. Listen, I'm putting y'all up to game, but make dating easy for you and your intended. Because when we date with children, it's already enough complications. Make it easier, right? Now also, we have to remember that we have children to consider. When you are dating, you are not only dating for yourself, you are dating for the children that is in your household. So I know some people may feel like it's too soon to be thinking about marriage. I don't necessarily agree with that because when you have children, really after a certain age, we date with intention anyway. I'm 37 with a 17 year old and a seven year old. Wasting time is not something I have the luxury of doing. Who can relate? Time is the most valuable thing that we have. So I wanna be very intentional with who I meet, how we meet, where our time is best spent. I wanna make sure that I'm aligning myself with someone who has the same intent, the same desires, and the same purpose. I am dating with the intention of aligning with my husband. And I hope that my husband or the man that I'm dating is dating with the intent to align with his wife, right? So another tip is being very intentional and very vocal and transparent about what your purpose of dating is. Now, if you are just trying to have fun and you are just out here living your life, baby, no judgment, have fun, enjoy, but keep that man away from your kids. Fun never meets our kids. I said what I said, and I know it's hard because those kids be meddling in our FaceTimes and they be meddling when we on the phone, I get it, but keep your children completely separated from a man you know you are only having fun with. There has never been one situation where I've ever seen that that worked out well, ever. But if this is a man that you know is dating with the intent to marry and you are dating with the intent to marry that while y'all are dating you both need to really be asking each other probing questions you specifically need to be discovering if this is the type of man that you would want your children to follow his example is this the type of relationship that i want my children to model we are the examples for our kids. And so remember, you're not just dating for you, you're dating for your kids. 
So be comfortable asking the tough questions, talking about parenting styles, talking about finances, talking about marriage and what will our household look like hypothetically if we were ever to get into a relationship. Now these are conversations that are gonna come later on in the relationship or in the dating process. Do not bring these conversations up date one, date two, date three, you're doing too much. The only thing y'all need to be talking about with the first three to four weeks is who he is and who you are and your core values. The children don't even need to be bring, brought up yet because you don't even know if you align with him as an individual. Now, after three or four months of y'all talking on the phone and y'all FaceTiming and y'all doing those breakfast dates, lunch dates, three weeks, four weeks in, okay, it's looking promising, right? Now, I need you to be okay having a nighttime date. I need you to be okay with allowing your older children. In my case, I got a 17-year-old. Baby, I will come home, get them kids fed, pizza ordered, whatever, make sure the house is secure, and I will leave my oldest in charge for a couple of hours to go on a date. Do not feel guilty. You deserve to have a life outside of your children, outside of work. It does not make you a bad mom. I repeat, it does not make you a bad mom because you are asking for those oldest kids who are 14, 15, 16, 17, they old enough to watch out for those eight, nine, and 10 year olds, right? It does not make you a bad mom. Repeat that to yourself three times. It does not make you a bad mom. It does not make you a bad mom. It does not make you a bad mom because you are asking your older children to be responsible for their younger siblings for a couple of hours so you can go have a life, okay? So after three, four weeks, when y'all go on that dinner date at nighttime, now you'll know how serious y'all are going to get, right? If you all have been really communicating open and transparent over the last three, four weeks and things are going well, y'all go on a nighttime date, y'all enjoy some personal time and conversation, you should be able to tell after 30 days or so if this is a man that I could be serious with. And if so, then proceed. And now over the next few weeks, y'all have the tough conversations about finances and parenting and you know religion and politics right so if you take the first 30 days to get to know that man as an individual but then you take the next 30 days to get to know that man as a father figure and a leader of a household right and he's doing the same ladies if he's willing to share all this information with you you need to be willing to share all this information with him now you got two months in right now month three, I hear people with this whole 90 day rule and I'm not letting nobody meet my kids until 90 days and I get it, but I just believe, and here's another tip, that you need to have a conversation with your children on whether or not they're ready to meet the person that you're dating. If your children, especially if they're older, they're not ready to meet the person that you are romantically interested in, I need you to respect that. Now I need you and your children to have a conversation about the fact that mommy's not gonna stop dating, but I would respect that you don't want them in your space yet. And you let your intended know, my children are not ready, but I hope that doesn't interfere with how we grow and proceed, right? Just be open and honest. But remember the entire purpose of dating, especially while you are a single mom, is dating with the intent to meet a husband and meet the leader or the head of your household. That's if me and you have the same ideology. If you think differently, then some of this advice may not work, but some may, okay? Now, let me do a quick recap. You need to make sure you organize your time so you can find time today. You need to make sure that you are open and honest with what you are looking for, your intent and your purpose. You need to make sure that you communicate with your children so that they know, mommy not gonna be single forever. Take time to ask those tough questions so you can sincerely vet that man, right? And 
Last but not least on this video, cause it's looking like we might need to do a part two. If y'all want a part two, y'all let me know. But last but not least, you need to be okay setting boundaries. Everything can't just be easy, go with the flow, whatever you wanna do. You have to be okay letting the romantic interest of your life know I love spending time with you, but because I want to make sure that my responsibilities are home at home are also met, I, I'm sorry, I'm not ready for you to come to my house, especially when my kids are there. I can come to you. And remember what I said earlier about making it convenient. Sometimes it may not be convenient. Sometimes as a single mom, you may have to go a little bit out of your way to spend time with the man that you're romantically interested in if that ensures that your children are safe, sound, and uninvolved. It is okay for you to make sure that your babies are at a babysitter's, make sure they're at home with their older siblings. You may have to call your mom, hey mom, I have met a really nice man. I would love to go out and spend some time with him. Do you think the kids can stay with you Friday night? Explain to your parents, explain to your siblings, whoever your support system is, explain to them, I am not dating just for me. I am dating for my children as well and I wanna make sure that I make the best choice. And in order for me to vet properly, I wanna keep my children completely separated from this situation while I feel this man out because I gotta make sure he's okay. I do not see too many people in your village not supporting you because they understand that you deserve love and you deserve balance and you deserve to be treated well and just share your goals with them. I want to lead by example for my children. I want my children to see me be loved properly. I want my children to see what a healthy marriage looks like. And I'm not saying to guilt trip anybody in your support system, but sometimes we gotta state the obvious. In our family, we don't have a lot of examples. And I'm dating to find my best match so I can have a good example for my children because we needed that. And this is me speaking as if you were talking to your sibling or talking to your mom or your dad. We needed that. And I'm just asking for your support. Do you mind if the kids stay here Friday night so I can go on a date? I'll come and get them first thing Saturday morning. You have to be okay with communicating with your village of the intent and what you are hoping to accomplish. Because again, and I, I'll close with this, dating while you are a single mom is hard. But when you know what you are waiting for, when you know what you are waiting to align with, it becomes easier because you have a list, you have a criteria that you are trying to meet and feel. When you are dating with intent as a single woman, especially a single mom, do not be afraid to follow that criteria. If you know you want a man of God, if you know you want a man with compassion, if you know you want a man with patience, if you don't see that exhibited in those first two or three months, there is no reason for it to go any further. There is no reason to introduce him to the kids, let him come by the house. There's no reason for any of that. He does not meet your criteria. Be okay with removing him from your life because you're doing both of you all a, a disservice to keep him attached to you. Meaning, if he's not your husband, let him go so he can go and find his wife. And then your husband now knows that you are free for him to come and find you. But keeping people around because we're tired of being alone or my kids are already comfortable. See, if you never let that happen, it'll make it very easy to sever that tie. So here is some tips and tricks to dating as a single mom. It is just my opinion that we also deserve love. I believe that we deserve the balance of being able to go out and put on a nice dress and do some adult things. We get tired of talking to these kids every day, all day, right? But you do have to make sure that you have the support system around you, you have boundaries set, and you're open and honest with the people that are your support system and your romantically involved partner. You have to make sure that everybody knows what you need and what the kids need so you guys can have a successful dating experience. 
Well, I hope this helps. If you want a part two, because baby, I got a whole lot more, leave it in the comments and we'll see each other next time. Thank you guys for watching. I love you all.